In this lecture, we are going to talk about the concepts related to glomerular hydrostatic pressure and the effect of arterial pressure, afferent arteriolar resistance and efferent arteriolar resistance on glomerular hydrostatic pressure, glomerular colloid osmotic pressure and GFR. As we are discussing the urine formation process and in the urine formation process, we have start discussing determinants of the GFR, glomerular filtration rate, because filtration is the first step of urine formation and filtration, in filtration, the GFR, the filtration rate, the glomerular filtration rate is very much important. We have discussed several determinants of the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate, and today we will focus on glomerular hydrostatic pressure. The glomerular hydrostatic pressure is the primary force, the primary pressure which determines the changes in the GFR. Although we discussed the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure, it has some effects on the GFR. We also discussed Bowman's capsule pressure, it has some effects on the GFR, but they are not the primary determinants. Glomerular hydrostatic pressure is uh, in fact one of the most important pressure which can lead to changes in the GFR. Now, talking about this pressure, the glomerular hydrostatic pressure is normally around 60 mm of mercury and it is a positive pressure for filtration because it is helping the filtration process. While the other forces, the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure, pressure and the Bowman's capsule pressure are negative pressure because they were opposing, they oppose the filtration process. Now, let me tell you that this diagram this simple diagram is the simplified version of this diagram which shows that inside the kidney blood is brought to the nephron through the afferent arteriole and in the affer and then it divides into the glomerulus which is a bunch of capillaries the glomerular capillaries where filtration occurs into the Bowman's capsule and the remaining blood leads to the efferent arteriole. Now, filtration at this end occurs due to some pressure and the main pressure responsible is the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and it is mostly due to the fluids in the plasma. Now we will discuss the, the factors which will increase the pressure at the glomerular capillaries and we will discuss how changes in the resistance at afferent end and efferent end will change the GFR, the filtration rate, the glomerular filtration rate. So coming to the point, the main forces, the main factors which will increase or decrease the glomerular hydrostatic pressure in the GFR, they include the arterial pressure, afferent arteriolar resistance, efferent arteriolar resistance. Now arterial pressure. Arterial pressure is basically the pressure which is forcing the blood through the blood vessels. Now this pressure basically is forcing the blood forward. Now any increase or decrease in the arterial pressure can increase the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and it can ultimately increase or decrease GFR. So changes in the arterial pressure, the force which is pushing the blood forward through the blood vessels, that is the arterial pressure and that is the one important determinant of the glomerular hydrostatic pressure which in turn, which in turn is the determinant of the GFR. So this force is an important determinant of the GFR, determinants of the GFR and the arterial pressure is an important determinant of this pressure, the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. So when changes occur in this pressure, the arterial pressure they are normally contracted through some uh, feedback mechanisms. If this pressure increases, if this force increases, it is brought down to the normal. If it is, if it decreases, then the body, the contract, the feedback mechanisms try to bring it back to the normal. So it turns to the normal very quickly. This arterial pressure, it turns to the normal very quickly. And it is very simple that increasing the arterial pressure will increase the hydrostatic pressure and that will increase the GFR. And decreasing arterial pressure will decrease the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and it will decrease the GFR. Now, coming to the two more factors which also uh, play an important role in increasing the decreasing this pressure, they are the afferent arteriolar resistance and efferent arteriolar resistance. So, afferent arteriolar resistance is the resistance or it is the force which is basically stopping the movement of blood in the afferent arteriole. So, the arterial pressure was pushing the blood through the blood vessels through this uh, afferent arteriole, but the afferent arteriolar resistance is opposing any movement of blood in the afferent arteriole. It is a sort of resistance, it is a sort of resistance in the afferent arteriole and it is basically trying to stop, it is basically trying to stop the movement of blood. Now, the afferent arteriolar resistance and its effect on the blood flow and its effects on the GFR are plotted here. Now we see, we see that uh, we have plotted, we have plotted the here is the renal blood flow, here is the renal blood flow and here is the GFR, the red color is the GFR and the uh, blue color is the blood flow. So it is the GFR and this one is the blood flow. And here is the afferent arteriolar resistance. Now normally, normally the afferent arteriolar resistance is 1x at this level. This is the 1, so at this level we have the afferent arteriolar resistance and at this level 
the GFR it at this level at around 125 ml per minute. So this is the afferent arteriolar resistance. Here is the glomerular filtration rate, the GFR, which has been plotted here with the red color graph. And here we have the renal blood flow. In the renal blood flow is basically presented with this blue color graph. So normally if the afferent arteriolar resistance is normal, one, this is the level and at this level, the GFR is also normal and the blood flow is also normal. If the afferent arteriolar resistance increases, suppose for example, this resistance, this force or this force, it increases and the resistance to the movement of blood increases, this resistance increases, then you see the blood flow comes down quickly. The bl blood flow starts decreasing. The blood flow is at this level. At this level is the blood flow. But as soon as the resistance increases, the blood flow starts coming downward. The blood flow starts coming downward. And as the blood flow starts coming downward, you see that the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate, which has been present, which has been presented here with this red color graph, it also starts coming down. So with the increase in the afferent arteriolar resistance, the renal blood flow and the GFR comes down. It is because due to the increasing resistance of the afferent arterioles, the glomerular hydrostatic pressure drops. And when the glomerular hydrostatic pressure drops, the GFR also drops. If, if there is dilation of the afferent arterioles, if there is dilation of the afferent arterioles and the resistance decreases, suppose for example, from this point, if the resistance in decreases, if the resistance decreases this way, then you see the, the blood flow, the blood flow starts increasing. Here is the blood flow. And you see the blood flow starts increasing. The blood flow here will start increasing. And at the same time, the GFR will start increasing. And this is also due to the increase in the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. So increasing the resistance decreases the blood flow and decreases the GFR. But decreasing the resistance, decreasing the resistance, decrease, increases the blood flow, increases the blood flow and increases the GFR. So that's the effect of afferent arteriolar resistance on the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and the GFR. Now coming to the efferent arteriolar resistance. This is the third determinant of the glomerular hydrostatic pressure, which is a determinant of the GFR. So this one is a little bit tricky. This is a little bit tricky. See, if the, the efferent arteriolar resistance, the resistance at this end, is suppose for example, there is some sort of pressure or stenosis, which is causing a resistance to the mo movement of blood flow. Blood is normally flowing this way. But if we start blocking this efferent arteriole and we are opposing the movement of blood in the efferent arteriole, what will happen? Now look at this. Normally the efferent arteriolar resistance is also 1x, normal. And with this normal resistance, here we have the red color GFR at this end, the normal GFR at around 125 ml per minute. This is the normal GFR at normal resistance. And this is the normal blood flow here. This is the renal blood flow, renal blood flow. So with normal efferent arteriolar resistance, the, res the, the GFR is normal. This is the GFR. R and this is the blood flow. Now, a, a slight increase in the efferent arteriolar resistance increases the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and it in fact starts increasing the GFR. If there is some small resistance, if the resistance at the efferent end increases a little bit, the glomerular hydrostatic pressure increases and when it increases, the GFR starts increasing, the filtration rate starts increasing. Although the blood flow, although the blood flow has started decreasing. Now see, now see, the resistance has slightly increased. The resistance has slightly increased to this end. Normally the resistance is here at this, at this level. Now if we bring the resistance to this level, the GFR has increased. The GFR has increased, but the blood flow has decreased because the blood is coming into the glomerular capillaries and it cannot move out. So the pressure in the glomerular capillaries is increasing and the glomerular, at this end, the blood is coming normally and it, at this end, it is being blocked. So the pressure in the glomerular capillaries is increasing due to which the glomerular hydrostatic pressure is increasing and the GFR starts increasing. But what ha But you see that the blood flow has started decreasing from this end. The blood is being dumped here and it is being accumulated or pressurized here but from this end the blood flow has started decreasing now if the this resistance increases like more than three times if the resistance has reached this level and it has increased from like this end what happens is that the blood flow has decreased so much the blood flow the blood flow has decreased so much the blood flow initially started decreasing the blood flow initially started decreasing at that at that time the gfr started increasing 
but if the blood flow has decreased so much that the that the fluid has been filtered and the proteins accumulated here and due to the increased accumulation of proteins the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure has increased due to the proteins being accumulated here we have discussed several time that when filtration occurs the when filtration occurs the fluid is filtered but the proteins remain in the glomerular capillaries so when the proteins remain in the glomerular capillaries they get concentrated like this here you see the green color dots they are presenting the proteins here they are dilute but with the increase filtration of fluid the remaining proteins get concentrated due to concentrated proteins the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure increases when this pressure increases when this pressure starts increasing this pressure opposes the filtration process fluid cannot be filtered and at this time when the filtration starts decreasing the gfr falls so what happens that that with the e increasing efferent arteriolar resistance initially there is a slight increase in the gfr but at the same time the blood flow has started decreasing now if the resistance increases more than 3 times of the normal then the blood flow decreases so much that it ultimately increases the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure and that pressure in turn start decreasing the gfr so at this point the gfr starts going down below the normal level no so to summarize this the glomerular hydrostatic pressure is dependent on arterial pressure afferent arteriolar resistance and efferent arteriolar resistance by increasing the arterial pressure the glomerular hydrostatic pressure increases and gfr increases by decreasing arterial pressure the glomerular hydrostatic pressure decreases and gfr decreases but when we increase the afferent same is uh, same happens for the afferent arteriolar resistance if the resistance to blood flow at the afferent end increases the the glomerular hydrostatic pressure decreases the gfr decreases and the blood flow decreases the, the blood flow starts decreasing and the gfr starts decreasing with the increasing resistance at the afferent end but at the efferent end if the resistance starts increasing initially the gfr starts increasing due to pressure due to increase pressure in the glomerular capillaries but the blood flow starts decreasing at very soon as soon as the resistance starts starts increasing the the blood flow has started decreasing but the gfr initially starts increasing but if the resistance has increased so much that it has crossed three times the resistance of the normal three times of the normal resistance then the blood flow will decrease so much that the gfr will also start decreasing so this this is the summary of the glomerular hydrostatic pressure the determinants of the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and their effect on the gfr and ultimately the gfr is having effect on the renal blood flow so all those factors all those Uh, conditions pathologies which will which will increase these pressures which will either increase or decrease the arterial pressure or increase the afferent arteriolar resistance or efferent arteriolar resistance they ultimately will have effect on the gfr which ultimately will have effect on the renal uh, functions thanks a lot for watching the video